Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. This week, I'm joined by Aaron Portratz and Nathan Hawkins of the Shrink Think podcast. And Shrink Think is also a part of the PsychCraft Network. And on their show, they discuss everything from understanding styles of therapy to addressing conflict with your counselor, learning about attachment styles and the fear triangle. They seek to run the gamut of topics to pull back the curtain and empower effective therapy. And I'm so glad to have them on the show this week. We're discussing the important topic of how to pick a therapist. Finding the right professional for you can be a daunting task, but it's crucial for making the most of your therapy experience. They will be sharing tips and guidance on what to look for in a therapist, questions to ask, and how to find the right fit for you. Whether you're a first-time therapy seeker or looking to switch therapists, this episode is for you. And they also touch on a few marketing tips for therapists. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, relax, and let's talk about how to pick a therapist that's right for you. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of The Therapy Show. I am so thrilled to have two amazing guys on the podcast this week. I have Aaron Potratz and Nathan Hawkins of the Shrink Think podcast. So welcome to the show, you guys. It's awesome to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Lisa. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Can you share with my listeners um, a little bit about your show, about who you are, what you do, how you help, all that good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Aaron Potratz, and I am an LPC, licensed professional counselor here in Oregon. And I'm also a supervisor, so I do a little bit of that. Um, I've got a group practice myself, and then I also co-own one with Nathan. So yes, that's like two group practices between us. So there's a lot of therapy that's happening, uh, but I love it. It's just a lot of variety. I love what I do. I love helping. I do consulting. I'm hosting a retreat next year in North Carolina. And then also Nathan and I um, host the Shrink Think podcast. It is a podcast that's for therapists and also for clients because the goal for us is really to bridge the gap between clients and therapists. And um, like we were talking about, we recorded uh, before for our show before this, you know, a lot of people that are going to therapy want to know what it's all about. They don't really know how to do it or what are the, like what what are, what are some things I need to know about it in order to go? What do I say? How do I do this well? And so we want to kind of educate them and bridge that gap so that therapists are getting clients that are well-informed and prepared. And then clients are going, bringing kind of their best stuff to work on in therapy. So it's the best way I think that we can help people help themselves. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm Nathan Hawkins. I'm also an LPC um, here in Oregon, also a supervisor and own a group practice and co-own, as Aaron mentioned. Of course, we do the Shrink Thing podcast, right? And um, done a little bit of consulting. Aaron's got a full business model that he does. Um, so yeah, we just we just love what we do. And and with the how we kind of got into it a little bit was we were at this, this conference in Colorado uh, that was put on by Practice of the Practice. And Joe Sanok was talking. And he was talking about how like, oh, you should do a podcast because this is the, it's like the wild west cowboy days of, of like pod, like right now in this, in this whole genre and um, get in on the bottom floor and blah, 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 blah. And it was kind of like wanting to be one of the cool kids or something, you know, like, Aaron, well, Garen was like, I want to do a podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> you're not doing a podcast out of me. <laughs> and so we were like, you know, basically, okay. And then we were like, what are we going to talk about? And and kind of it was, you know, we started off by thinking in terms of when people, we get weird questions as therapists all the time, like, or or maybe not necessarily questions, but expectations that come like when you walk into a room and somebody goes, hey, what do you do for a living? And you're like, well, I'm a therapist. And they're like, oh. And then all of a sudden there's like, all this stuff is in the room. So we thought, oh, it might be cool to share what that's like, you know, and then it grew into like, because we're like normal people at the same time, but then it grew into all the other stuff that we've been talking about. So, yeah. And then a hundred episodes later, here we are two years and a hundred episodes later, just like you, we're still going. 
Yeah. I, I love your story. Um, I was kind of laughing when you said, you know, you're at a party and people ask what you do. And, and in that, you make that, that decision and that nanosecond, do you tell them or That's not? Right. do you tell them or not? And I end up telling them cause I can't lie and I can't make up anything even cooler than what we do, but I can't think of something else to say in the moment. So I'm like, I'm a therapist. <gasps> oh, let me ask you something. My life. I have a friend. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we're off. And it's funny because in that moment, I'm like, well, first of all, I'm not on the clock and I'm not getting paid. So I just let them talk. I'm like, you say whatever you want, but I don't want them to think that that's what therapy is. <laughs> so I, right. I have a hard time. I'm like, so, and I usually go, do you want me to just listen? Or do you want me to give you my advice? And then if they go, oh, I want your advice. And I'm like, okay, well, you should probably come in. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Just pass your card. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I'm really excited to have you guys on the show because I've listened to so many of your episodes. And the first time I listened to you, I listened, I do most of my podcasts listening on walks. Um, that's when I get like most time to myself. And I was listening to one of your episodes and I think it's when you first joined the Sightcraft Network. And I was like, let me see what these guys are about. And I just remember laughing out loud that people probably thought I was insane. Just walking down the sidewalk, like I'm like, these guys are hilarious. I get them. I think they, I, they would get me and I want to hang out with them. And then I realized you were in Oregon. I was like, well, one day we can hang out in person. The next best thing is to podcast swap. So I, I just am so excited to, to have you guys here. Your most recent episode really made me laugh. It was about somebody wrote in or one of your clients said, how do you guys remember all the the stories that you hear? Or how do you remember each person so well? And I think that's a great episode. So if you are one of my listeners and you're not a therapist, but you've always been curious to know a little bit more about what it's like to be a therapist and the process of, you know, therapy, definitely check out Shrink Think. You're going to have a really good time. And they, I think you did another one, Gaslighting. And that was when I think everybody's I don't know. talking about it. Yeah. Everyone's talking about it. And you were like, everybody's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <all> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I was laughing so hard. Gaslighting is definitely one of those terms that, you know, gets thrown around a lot these days. And you really cleared the air on like, what is gaslighting? So I appreciated that episode a lot. Okay. So I would love to talk to you guys about finding a therapist. I did an episode actually, uh, not too long ago called how to find a therapist where I give, I think seven ideas on how to, find a therapist. If you have never been, and you don't know how to even go about finding one, I gave some pretty basic, you know, ideas, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about when somebody is looking for something very specific as for their therapist. Um, for example, I hear, I hear this every now and then. Um, and, and this comes to me at my job because I do a lot of assessing and referring at where I work. So I don't do a whole lot of therapy right now, but they'll come to me and go, I want to work with somebody who is perfect. <laughs> like they have a great marriage. They have their health and wellness together. Um, they have their emotional reactivity down to a science. Like they want like this person that doesn't exist in my mind. And you could probably take that, you know, that request and apply it to another, another type of professional. But what do you say to that? Like, what do you guys think about that? I, that question? Those therapists are on the island of Atlantis <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they have powers. I think one one thing I guess I would say right off the bat is if you are that person, you need to kind of be ready to wait because all therapists are super busy. And the truth is, is that if you're going to, if you, if you're really specific, you're also going to have to be willing to take a lot of time. So that means you need to use your time. You need to, you, you, if you need to be diligent and start your search and just figure on the fact that this is going to take a while for you to have to get your search done. And then on top of it, you're probably going to have to wait after you find the person that you're interested in. But I think, I think what people really are wanting at the end of the day is authenticity because, because the truth is, is that, I mean, you can have a person that I'm just thinking, okay, we'll, we'll use outside of our profession, like a lawyer. I, I want a lawyer to do a, a really good job. And I want a lawyer to actually care about my case. So if they are this arrogant, smart person that can do a good job, I don't want them to worry more about themselves doing their job than they're worried about me. So, and I, and I think it probably translates to some extent when you're trying to find a therapist. Yeah. And, and I think that as therapists, it's a little bit 
it's a lot different, I think, than a lot of these other professions, because as you said, Lisa, that it's a relationship, you know, you're, you're entering into not just somebody who's going to do work on my behalf, but they're going to do work with me, um, interacting with me. And we're going to have this like very close relationship working on, on me. So I would say with that context, I think, uh, people are actually looking for somebody that is real, but also somebody who has kind of been through some things, because I think you get a lot of that actual knowledge and actual like life experience, not just sitting on the other side of, of people not ever going through anything or having struggled through anything. But usually I think the people who are knowledgeable and, and really authentic are the ones who have had some struggle in their life. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're in constant struggle or they've had something major happen right now. Maybe it's their upbringing um, or maybe it is somebody that, you know, in their either adult life, they went through something, this became a second career and they wanted to kind of turn that into something meaningful to help people. So I would say people who have been through something have probably a lot to offer if they've done the work themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree with you on that. And just kind of reflecting over my years of being a therapist, you know, in the beginning, um, I didn't, let's see, for me, this is kind of like second career because I didn't become a therapist until I was in my early thirties. But in the beginning, I remember thinking, looking around at my grad school peers and I was older than a lot of them and thinking, well, at least I've lived a little bit more of a life here. So I wasn't as worried about sitting down with clients for the first time. I mean, I was a little bit, but I wasn't like scared to death, you know? And I knew that the authenticity piece was really important. I was an LMFT or am an LMFT, but I wasn't married yet. I didn't have kids yet. And that really felt, what's the word? Um, I felt like an imposter in the beginning because I didn't have those things. However, I come from a family. <laughs> I've witnessed marriages. I have witnessed divorces. I have witnessed, you know, parenting. So I knew, and I also had this education under my belt. So, and I had really good mentorship and really good supervision, you know? So I knew that I, I couldn't, I remember my, my supervisor was like, you can't really mess up. You're, you're always, if you, if you mess up, we're still one session ahead. So we can, we can backtrack and we can kind of fix things, you know? And so that kind of gave me some confidence as well, but I definitely like how you spoke to you know, having these lived experiences, even if they're the person wants to focus on, you know, divorce or marriage and the therapist they're going to has been divorced or is going through a divorce. It's like, they still have valid life experiences under their belt. Plus, you know, the years of being a therapist to help that person. So I think that's really important. And that's not to knock the newer therapists that are just coming out because they have lots of skills and they can help lots of people just as much as the ones who've been around the block longer. I think that's a really good way of, of framing that. So yeah, and also the idea of uh, if you're looking for that specific of a therapist and you want all of these things, you want to like check the box and all these different things, I would be like, well, what I think we need to do. Like, I almost am curious about this person, you know, and, and like what's going on that you have to have this perfect person sitting across from you. Like to me, that's the curiosity that I have right off the bat when I have that request. Um, what do y'all think about that? Yeah, it's kind of goes with that. The saying that I like to say to, to people is like, if, if you're going into therapy, get ready to be confronted with the hard reality that you are the problem. You are <laughs> yeah. the biggest problem in your own life. And I don't mean that like in a critical way. I mean, like if I'm going to sit across from you and you're my therapist, Lisa, you're going to say the same thing to me. You're going to be like, Aaron, you are a problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't even get it there. Like, no, I was like, yes. you've been waiting. <laughs> yes, he's I been waiting for <laughs> weeks. He's wanted to say that. <laughs> it's totally true though. Like, and I know that it, you know, if you have any kind of self-awareness, you will know that you are your own biggest obstacle. So when people are coming and sitting across from me or they're reaching out for therapy, I'm thinking, you know, what is it that you're bringing to the table that you want to work on? And also, what is it that you're bringing to the table that you don't necessarily know yet that you're going to need to be, be working on? Like, oh, I have this perfectionism thing, or maybe there's this fear that if you are not perfect, then I'm not going to get the help that I need because I'm terrified of putting myself out there. And then it's not, it doesn't get better. Even with the best of the best, I want to have confidence that whatever my issues are, you've got enough skill and experience and knowledge that you can help me because that would be terrifying for me if I could not get the help that I need. 
again, that's saying so much about me and my own fear. I think one thing I wanted to add, and it, it goes along with what you were just saying, Aaron, but also is a little preempting to that. I think when people, there, there are situations where people feel like, you know what, that's cool. I feel like, you know, normally I would, I wouldn't care. I'd pick whatever therapist that wouldn't bother me. But this situation, I feel like I really kind of need someone who I think is going to get it. And, and that makes sense to me. I I mean, that's kind of what I was saying before, like, you're, you're going to need to take some time and probably that situation, like if you're, you're, it's kind of the same thing in the, in the world of drug and alcohol abuse. If you know that somebody has been through it and then they made it out of it and there are certain things that they just get. I mean, I, so I guess I just want to say, I do get it that, that there are situations that come up where you do want to find somebody like that. I think the other thing that comes in um, on top of that is the current culture around therapy. And it's kind of divided when you think about it. On the one hand, there's the medical model that's pushing this idea that, you know, and there's a lot of therapists on board. They're like, okay, come in, do therapy as quick as you can and get out. And then there's a lot of, there's a, there's a pushback where like, Hey, well, we just want to try, I want to try to figure myself out. I want to take some time. And as a normal person trying to enter the fray of therapy, you might kind of understand that vibe, not really know what to say about it, but then you're trying to find somebody who doesn't want to push you out because you don't want to be like a problem and you want to go over your life. But then how do you find that person? Okay, so you've got a website and you're ready to market your private practice to the world. However, when you look at the analytics, if you even have them, you can see that people just aren't showing up to the website. So you wonder, how can I get more clients if no one even knows I exist? And after doing a bit of research and talking to colleagues, you learn that SEO, also known as search engine optimization, is what you need to do in order to attract traffic to your website and create a steady flow of new clients in your business. So you start learning what you can about optimizing your website through YouTube, podcasts, and blog posts. And that's when the confusion really sets in, right? Which keywords should I use? Where exactly do I put them? What content do I need on my site? And how do I even write the stuff so Google finds it? And after some time, you piece some of this SEO stuff together, but you're not entirely sure whether you've done it right, missed a step, or even if you're on the right track. You're kind of just doing what everyone is suggesting, but you're not sure how it all fits together. And you're left wondering if clients will ever be able to find you and whether getting new clients from Google each month, it might just be a pipe dream. If any of this sounds familiar to you, and it does to me, I wanted to let you know about an opportunity that my good friend, Daniel Fava from Private Practice Elevation has put together. After working with scores of clients on their SEO strategy and understanding how confusing SEO can be when learning it on your own, he's decided to teach private practice owners the exact same process he and his team use to get more visibility for their clients. So Daniel has put together the SEO Basecamp live nine week small group training that consists of video training and live implementation classes. And over the course of nine weeks, he will give you access to the exact SEO process that he uses at private practice elevation to help their clients set up the foundational SEO elements that will get them more organic traffic and clients. You'll get to follow along as he creates an SEO strategy as a real life example, his wife's own private practice website. And each week you'll have a lesson to watch based on one aspect of improving your online visibility. And with each lesson, you'll receive the resources, templates, and homework to start implementing what you've learned. Then you'll meet as a group for an implementation call to clear any roadblocks, answer questions that may come up, get feedback on your progress, and hold each other accountable. So this class will be limited to just 12 people so that you can work closely together and make sure you get the attention and results that make an impact on your business. So if you've been wanting to add more organic traffic and clients to your business, now is a great time to join. And if you want a roadmap that shows you where your SEO stands right now and how to get to where you want it to be, this is it. Enrollment in this round of SEO Basecamp Live begins on January 30th and ends Sunday, February 5th at midnight. Be sure to click on the link in the show notes to go ahead and grab one of the 12 spots available. Stay tuned on the, <laughs> the therapy show. <laughs> These are such good questions and things I haven't honestly really thought that much about, mainly because of the work that I do. But I do understand 
the, what, you know, what you're saying for sure. It's, it is, it's the, you got these two camps. I mean, and I'm not, you've got the one side that's driven by health insurance. That's going to tell you, you know, get them, they get eight sessions <laughs> based on this diagnosis. Then you've got the person that is like, well, okay. So I have eight sessions to figure all my stuff out, but I want to keep going and I want to keep doing that. Well, then you got to pay out of pocket some and, or come up with a new diet. I mean, it's just crazy. Like the whole system to me is just bonkers, but that's a whole other podcast I'm guessing. So we maybe won't touch that too much, <laughs> but yeah. So I, I think we, there's a lot going on in, in that request, you know, and I almost would want to take a referral fee for helping that person figure out what they needed or wanted. I mean, it, that really is work in itself. So it's just, it's just you as the person seeking therapy have to, you know, maybe try a couple different things. So I feel like it's just going to take time for that person to, if they're looking for a therapist, it just takes time to find a good, a, a good fit. I mean, and, and there's lots of different ways that you can go for it. Yeah, I think there's one more thing too, that I guess I would say, cause I know some of your audience is therapists are therapists. And I would say, you know, when I, uh, one of the things that I do as a consultant is I'll help people with some of their marketing. And so therapists will put their bios out there either on their website or on like psychology today, these therapist directories. And one of the things that I think does clients and therapists no good is by marketing yourself as a therapist who does all of these modalities. I have all of these degrees and I've served in all these, all of these institutions. Uh, it, Cause if I'm a client, I'm like, okay, what is that? that? That's fine. What does that mean? Where in reality, what we're saying is like, if I'm, if I'm this client that's looking for something kind of specific, even if it is a little too specific, if there are therapists out there that are putting themselves out there of like, you know, I have been through struggles and I've overcome them. And that's why I'm doing some of the work that I'm doing. And I want to help you overcome your struggles. And, you know, I've got a high degree of like high standards for myself. And I want to help people achieve those for themselves, but with compassion or something like that. I'm telling you a bit about myself as a therapist, but also as a person, like, here's what you can expect as you engage with me. That's the kind of stuff that when people read that, they're going to be like, oh, I get you. Or, oh, I think you're going to understand me or, or we'll work well together. Right. So I think as if you're a therapist out there listening, um, consider changing your bio, you know, to something that's a lot more personable and take out all the approach stuff, or just put it somewhere like in the footnotes, you know, that's like, these are some of the things that I do, but let me tell you more about who I am. So that clients reading this, get a good feel for who you are. Right. I like that. And when I was on psychology today for just a short amount of time, when I was testing the waters with private practice, which by the way, is not for me. I like one of the first things I had on there was something like, I will help you live your best life. And that was, that's the truth. Like, I'm gonna help you live your best life, whatever that looks like for you. And I, I would get people when they would contact me there and I'm like, well, so what made you pick me over others? Like, oh, you just best life. Like I want to live my best life. And I was like, okay. <laughs> So it's, it was as simple as that for me. And I, you know, that's honestly what I want to help people do is, is live their best life, whatever that looks like for them. So I think that's really important advice and we can get so caught up in that whole like psychology today, check all these boxes. And I think what we're trying to do is look, we're, we're trying to, when people filter down, we want to be in that filter. But yet if you're with all those different things, it's like, and I were to look at that and I was looking for something specific, I would be like, well, how do I know? this person can really help me. If you do all of these things, that's a lot, you know? And I, I think nowadays it's more common for therapists to niche down or niche down and really focus on attracting that ideal customer, or ideal client. I mean, that's marketing. That's just, you got to do it. If you, if you really want to, you know, hone your, your uh, area of expertise, I am in total agreement with that. So awesome. Is there anything else that you want to add to that, Nathan? You like you got something. The only thing I was thinking is if trying to get, I was trying to think of practical ideas for, for people um, that were looking for this perfect person. I, could, I, I guess I'd probably do a bunch of Google searches about stuff that related to me and then try to figure out, I mean, honestly, like the acronyms and stuff that go with it. I mean, there's all these different certifications. And one of the things that Aaron's pointing out is some therapists that are really great people are just horrible at marketing. And so 
they don't know like so you <laughs> And they'll put all their acronyms up that they've got like all this LBC, CBC, BD, 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 alphabet group after their name. <laughs> and if you do know some of what those things are, you can do the research. You could search those uh, maybe a little bit more efficiently in the search engines, just as kind of a practical tip. But yeah, I mean, you're you're really, it's good that you're devoted to yourself going for that specific person. They probably don't totally exist. So you're going to have to look at what you're going to compromise on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about or in a different direction you want to go before we're done? Yeah, I guess uh, just in terms of, so we've talked a bit about um, how to pick a therapist or kind of some of those dynamics, I guess, just even the idea of picking a therapist, I think can be really important. Um, one of the things that I think a lot of people don't really know is that, and and maybe you've already spoken to it on your show, Lisa, is that actually picking somebody who you work well with, you get along with is very important. It's not just that you're going to pick somebody who is knowledgeable, right? Because if you have somebody who knows stuff, but you're uncomfortable with this person, or they don't seem to understand you, or they don't actually convey that you make you feel understood, so that you don't really have confidence that they understand you, that's not going to work well for you. Because the, the point of therapy is you're going to have to open yourself up and really, really trust this person with your insides, like your, you know, your, your deepest secrets and your, your greatest vulnerabilities. And so if you don't get along with that person, it's going to be really difficult to open that stuff up. I was talking with uh, a client just this week who was meeting with a couples counselor for the first time. I think he's had like a couple of, of sessions there. And uh, a couple of the things that this person said were like, whoa, like caught him off guard. And he was like, ooh, that kind of struck me the wrong way. But OK, I don't know this person. We're still getting to know each other. But it's he's got this concern where it's like, I don't know if I can trust this person. And so therefore, I don't know if I can really fully put all my cards on the table. Right. That's a problem. Because ultimately, if you're trying to get somewhere and do your best work, you need to put all your cards on the table. And so it is important that you do not just like you don't have to like your therapist, but you really do need to respect them and feel safe with them. Most therapists, I, I would think, would give you a, you know, a 10 minute phone call and you can get a lot from that. Um, like a, I, I do like a 10 to 15 minute free, uh, free consultation on the phone. For me, I don't want to have some, I don't think number one, people generally, if they're going to come in, they generally don't want to pay me $200 for the hour to, to find out if they like me. And we're not going to bill that to insurance. <laughs> right. So I'm like, you code that as um, anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, exploratory services. Yeah. If you want to do this, uh, sure. I'll talk to you about maybe doing this. Maybe we're going to be doing something or not anyway. So people generally will, will be like, okay. And you can find out a lot about a person. So I would say, see if you can get a phone call with them um, before you're just like, I pick you. <clears throat> But even, you know, going back to like therapists out there, like get, get on social media, do some stuff out there that whether it's blog posts or, you know, a podcast or like be interviewed or just do some stuff where people can get to know you a little bit. I mean, that's the thing these days that's different from back in the day before social media. I think therapists were super professional. You just had a professional website. Now it's like, Hey, look at the meal that I am eating out. You know, yeah, oh, my word. Watch me do a backflip. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh my. It's a, totally true. It's a little bit of like, this is my personality. You can get to know some, that's the point of social media. It's not to like, let me tell you about all my professional experience on this, this Instagram reel. It's to let you get to know me to see if like, oh, I like this person. Yeah. It's changed so much. I mean, gosh, if you think about when we first started, what we do as therapists, we didn't have social media, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't out there. And then I remember when I first got Facebook, I was like, do I tell people what I do? don't do that because then they will start messaging you. And it, well, I mean, I guess everybody's got to find their place with that. And nowadays it's like, they all want to friend you now, like your clients and you're like, no, don't friend me on social media. Like that's, that's not okay. That's a, that's a hard, I mean, that's a whole other topic of course, but no, let's talk about that too. <laughs> We're becoming your new co-host on your show. <laughs> all, right. all this content. <laughs> yeah, we may have to do another one on that, but, but there is, you got to find that fine line of like, what do you show on social media? And what you're comfortable with. And, and I think just as humans, we have to decide what we're comfortable with on showing on social media, because what, it, what you put out there, it can live forever. I mean, I tell my kids that all the time, like it doesn't, it's unforgiving. You put something out there, it's, it's there. Yeah. So that's a really good point. Yeah. Look people up on social media, see, and you know, if you, and I say it all the time, like 
if you have a friend who's a therapist, ask that friend, you know, like the therapist friend, like, who do you recommend? Because I'm going to be honest with you. Like I know in my neck of the woods who I think is really good, you know, but then I know lots of people that I don't even know that are out there that are good. So it's still, I don't know everything. Like I can't be omnipresent and I can't be omnipotent. Is that the word omnipotent? Yeah. I just used to really, is that right? I'll know it. I'll know. I just use a really big word. Omniscient. Yeah. That we're getting them all. There we yeah. go. So I think that's, these are all just such, such great points. Yeah. I'm so glad that you guys came on the show. Thank you. How do people find you? How do they, <laughs> how do they subscribe to your podcast? Because you never talk about that on your show. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's right. So we collect stars. <laughs> you are never going to believe this. I have to say this because I just realized that when, when I first started as a therapist, People, most therapists were still in this thing called the yellow, yellow page. pages. Oh, what's that? This dinosaur, like, yeah, you find them in archaeology digs. Yeah, you do. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> the yellow pages. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do. Oh, I was like, I've, heard I've heard my grandfather talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to your grandfather yesterday. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Well, we were at my mother in law's for Thanksgiving. I think it was Thanksgiving, and my daughter picked up like the phone. And she's like, so you used to use one of these? Like, because my mother-in-law still has the phone on the wall. She's like, you used to use this? I was like, yeah, you picked it up and you dialed the number. Like, press the buttons, just press them, see what it feels like. And she was like, wow. I'm like, oh, you walk upstairs with a super long (laughs) closet. Yeah, into the closet. closet. (laughs) She was like, that's just crazy to her. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, so tell us how to find your show. Yeah, we are uh, Shrink Think Podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart. We are on uh, Instagram as uh, at shrink.think. And um, you can find me uh, at Discover Counseling is the name of my organization. And we co-own at Life DCS, Life Discovery Counseling Services, but that's at Life DCS. And you can find me at, at Life Encounter Counseling on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. And our website is shrinkthink.com. Um, we do have a, a um, free email course. If anyone wants to sign up and take our free email course, we'll walk you through how to overcome fear and insecurity, imposter syndrome, those kinds of things. Uh, it's at uh, shrinkthink.com forward slash podcast. Awesome. Well, thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Nathan, for being here. This has been really fun. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we did this. Yes. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for having us. It was a great time. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey guys, before we end this episode, if you are liking my content, if you're liking my podcast, be sure to go over and leave me a five-star review on the podcast platform of your choice. And if you are up for it, I'd love it if you left me a review as well. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamuster.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.